So many projects. Hey folks, sorry it's been so long since I've posted anything here, but thanks for sticking with the channel. I really appreciate it. And seeing as we all have some free time recently, I figured I'd start on this project that I've been wanting to get to for a while now. And this one is all thanks to NitroCharged here on YouTube and RC Groups. If you like micros or EDFs or micro EDFs, go check him out. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I'll put a link for his channel down below. Uh, he drew up this uh, shroud and had it 3D printed. And stuck this little 0703 1500 kV motor, 15,000 kV motor in it. 20 millimeter impeller. Does about 27 grams of thrust on 3 amps on 2 cells. I'll be using one of these little 2.4 gigahertz receivers. Uh, got a couple linear micro servos. Uh, two cell brushless speed controller and a uh, two cell 160 milliamp pack. This is actually a smaller version of a plane I designed and built back in 2009. It was the first micro EDF I had really ever done and that ran a GWS 30 millimeter fan with a 12 millimeter Team Losi brushless inrunner that Nitro Charge also provided so kinda going full circle. Unfortunately, the original set of plans that I had drawn up for this are nowhere to be found, so I had to go through the pictures that I had taken of the plane back then and grab some paper and start drawing lines until I had something that looked like what I had built before. I got it close enough, I guess. Uh, I, do, I go through the same process at the end of the video with the wing design. With no real plans, I'm just kind of freehanding it as I go along, which is actually a pretty fun way to build sometimes so long as you don't build yourself into a corner later but this is a pretty straightforward thing so shouldn't be too big of an issue I know in some of my past build videos people were looking for a little more information than just watching a sped up version of the build itself so I'm trying this voiceover thing I don't know if it'll help or if I'll keep doing it but I slowed the video down and if you ever have any questions do feel free to leave them down in the comments because I guess it's one of the benefits of having a smaller channel I can actually read them all and answer everything so feel free to ask and here's some pictures of the original plane that I had done um, just so you can see what the heck it is I'm building here and yeah that's that's foam anyway uh, so I had just cut out the one side of the fuselage I'm saying everything nice this is only 1 32nd inch balsa so it's pretty flimsy and weak so a little bit of thin super glue goes a long way in strengthening up the tips of it so you know when it hits that inevitable ground it's not quite so catastrophic balsa glues together pretty good though after a crash you can it's pretty amazing what you can repair I'm trying to reuse my reuse my balsa as efficiently as possible but it doesn't always work i've tried Pretty much every store and hobby shop you can go to to get balsa, and unless you're building larger models, uh, this stuff usually isn't very good for really small stuff just because it's, it's always just so dense and so heavy. I'll try to find the link of the place that I order from because they have really good quality wood. Stay between the lines. I do cut pretty slowly. I mean, this is at four speed, but it's a lot easier to cut a nice straight line first and then sand a little imperfection out of it rather than a crazy line that you'd have to try to sand into submission. So. Get everything lined up and sand it every, everything even. You'll get a pretty crooked plane if you don't get things at least somewhat close. And it, it doesn't take much to uh, sand this stuff. I don't remember what grit this is, but it's pretty light.
So not having plans, it you know, it's a little freeing to build that way, but at the same time, you got to spend a little more time thinking about what you're doing. Uh, kick myself a little bit for not not being able to find the plans just so I could remember how it was I did it the first time, but. goes without saying careful when you're using your exacto especially in a situation like that where you're cutting along a straight edge because it's really easy to accidentally leave your finger a little over the edge and then you drag your blade across it and then you leave a chunk of your fingertip on the cutting mat and if you're going to do a lot of cutting do yourself a big favor and buy a big pack of blades because nothing is quite as nice as a fresh exacto blade It'll also a dull one will also tear lightweight balsa like this pretty easily. And as the old adage goes, measure twice and cut once, which I did and still got it wrong somehow. even after thinking about it. I was able to, I'll be able to reuse this piece though, so. gonna try to fix it but I figured I'd just leave it alone for now yeah this this balsa got a little twisted but it's not too bad I always try to keep my balsa stacked with a little bit of weight on it definitely helps keep it from waving over time. So this is going to be the bottom of the plane, basically. And I want the nose to be a little bit wider than the back end. A little bit of a taper to it. A little bit of labeling goes a long way. There's been several times where I had something sort of put together 
and then took it apart went to put it back together next time and it just never went back together the same way so label fix my first mistake I think measure 20 times cut once watch the fingers Seriously, you only do that once. It's not pleasant. That piece may not end up working after all, actually, so good job. Uh, balsa will take a pretty good curve. It doesn't take a lot, but you, you can get a nice curve out of it with a, just a little bit of pressure. Work it like you would foam. A little bit of a curve can go a long way in adding some stiffness to if you've ever flown a plane with just a flat wing versus one with just a little bit of an under camber it can make a big difference I had to go look at the picture because I couldn't remember how the heck I had done this part little bit of super glue goes a really long way. These are just little tiny dabs and then I smear it across. Super glue is surprisingly heavy. Making sure everything's square. Square-ish. I don't know if you saw that or not, but yes, I did just try to put the super glue cap on the pen. So yeah, about to do the wings, and this is how I went through the process of doing the fuselage shape as well. It's it's actually a pretty fun way to design. I almost enjoyed the design part of it more than the actual build part of it. It's a lot easier to make some lines than it is to build a whole plane. But yeah, basically just figure out the general shape that I want and cut that out. And then I use that as a template to make a copy. And then I adjust that copy to a new version. 
It's like control C, control P in real life. I'm not actually sure if these wings are going to be big enough. I have to go through and double check the weights of all the electronics and then estimate the weight of the airframe. Um, I usually go for a one to one ratio, one gram per one square inch for my regular builds. <clears throat> uh, if it's an indoor model, like a living room flyer, that's a different story, but that one gram per one square inch rule has worked for me on pretty much everything I've ever built so it's a good starting point if you want it to be able to fly slower give yourself more wing area but yeah that's about it for this one next video I'll be cutting these wings out assuming they're the right size and then uh, gluing everything else together and getting her done Thanks for watching.